In this episode of Geology Kitchen, we're going to be talking about the feldspars, a mineral group that is the second most abundant mineral group on planet Earth. Over 60% of the Earth's crust is actually comprised of this one set of minerals. There are many different minerals that actually make up the feldspar mineral group. The most common ones are microcline or orthoclase, which have a large contributor from the potassium element, anorthite, which is largely a calcium feldspar, and albite, which is made up of sodium feldspar. Feldspars that are poor in potassium and rich in sodium or calcium we call plagioclase or plagioclase feldspars and they contain mixtures of albite and anorthite. On the other hand, microcline or orthoclase are potassium rich feldspars, so we just call them potassium feldspars. Let's talk a little bit more about potassium. Bananas and other fruit are good sources of the element potassium. The body needs potassium for its cells to function properly, especially nerves. We couldn't even transmit information between our brains and our cells if it wasn't for potassium. Where does the potassium come from that's in bananas or vegetables or in any of these other types of foods? It comes from the soil, which includes clays that originated from weathered feldspar grains. Another very important element in feldspars that aids to our body is the element sodium. Sodium, we all know normally it's sodium chloride and normal table salt. Potassium can also be in salt, but we won't talk about that. It explodes in water. Sodium is found in many different things that we eat today. It's obviously table salt, but it can be found in processed meats. It can be found in nuts, and it can be found in all sorts of things. It's also a critical mineral for the body to have in order to allow cells to function and for things to work properly. The third very important element within feldspars is calcium. Calcium, the third element, is also very important for your body. It's good for your bones, it's good for your teeth, it's good for all your cell function. Calcium can be found in lots of different things, from leafy green kale to sardines to milk and dairy products. But ultimately it comes from the grass the cows eat, which comes from the clays that come from feldspars. And that ain't a bad thing. Making feldspars is just like making food in the kitchen. We have a recipe of elements and chemicals, and we need them in the proper amounts. For the silica, which is the base of all silicate minerals, including feldspars, we are using this glass bowl. In silicates, we have a silica and so many oxygen atoms. In the case of feldspars, we have two to three silicon atoms and eight oxygen atoms. We also need aluminum, which we're going to use this aluminum foil. And that's going to be the basis of our feldspar minerals. To that, we'll add some different variation on the theme of potassium, sodium, and calcium. Depending on the feldspars we make, we would add more calcium, or more potassium, or more sodium. So, we're going to make a banana split, and we're going to show you how you can use different solutions and make different banana splits, but still using potassium, sodium, and calcium. So we've got our aluminosilicate base here, and now to make a potassium feldspar, the first thing we need to do is cut this potassium-bearing fruit, also known as a banana, down the middle, and we will take half of that and put it in, and the other half, falling apart here a little bit, and that'll be the base of our banana split. Now at this point, this mineral would be called a potassium feldspar. It's got all the main ingredients of a potassium feldspar, like a microcline or orthoclase. But we're going to go beyond that. This is a solution, so now we need to add what? Ice cream, because you can't have a banana split without ice cream. And ice cream contains calcium. And we're going to add a little few scoops of ice cream to our banana split. Doesn't matter what the color is, whether it's strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla. All contains dairy, which contains calcium. So now we have a calcium potassium feldspar. Not to be outdone because we don't want to leave sodium out. We're going to take chopped nuts, which many people enjoy on their banana splits, 
and scatter them over the top. And now we've got all of the three main points of making a banana split and of making a feldspar. Of course, when I make my banana splits, I like to add a little bit of whipped cream to the top. Again, a calcium bearing dairy product. And for a little more potassium, heck, let's just add a few sweet cherries onto the top. So now, as you can see, we've got a nice analog for a solid solution, a mineral complex that is just like a feldspar, containing potassium, sodium, calcium, aluminum, and silicate. And the difference being, this one actually will taste pretty darn good. So as you can see, this is a great analog or a great model of a feldspar, but it tastes a lot better because it's a banana split. Now there are other things that we could add to this because remember we just have different foods around the kitchen that have potassium, sodium, and calcium. We could add all sorts of wacky stuff to this and find that same solution of, of elements. Obviously this is a nice and perfect banana split but things in nature don't always go perfectly and nature makes substitutions much like a cook can substitute one missing ingredient for another. There are a lot of things in the kitchen that may also have have potassium, calcium, or sodium. For example, let's say we wanted to add a little more sardines, which will add some great calcium. Kale, which also is a nice source of calcium. How about a little bit of ham, or cooked ham. maybe some soy sauce for a little extra sodium or some chopped broccoli. Now how does that look for you guys? <laughs> so we've shown you the feldspar group and talked a little bit about the key elements potassium sodium and calcium and shown how those elements are important to our own human bodies and the food that we eat today you also need to realize that all the cool chemical things going on inside these rocks quite frankly it's like a feldspar party in there